Horns up, talking Texas. This is it. This is the week we've been talking about, Quan. Since honestly, we've met you, we've been looking forward to this week. It's been circled on our calendars. It's circled on our calendars every year, and we have a very special guest joining us for the Red River Breakdown. Five-time Pro Bowler, Big Twelve Defensive Player of the Year. He may or may not have a national title. Well, who, who's counting that one realistically? <laughs> there's only one. There's only one in the. There's only one in Austin that we really care about. Um, but it's a great honor to have Roy Williams join us. Roy, how you doing, man? Shots fired! Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. We don't want to talk about that 2000. I mean that 2000 national championship. I see. Because I think we routed you guys 63 to 14 that year. Oh, <laughs> that's you, why you don't want to talk about it. That okay. you for sure did. You, that defense you were on held the Florida State team to two points, which yeah. honestly is not even your so y'all's fault at that point. That's just a safety. So you really blinked that team in the national championship. It's an so unbelievable defense. Ben Ben Painter, our long snapper, uh, God bless his soul. He's still alive. That's my boy, but. <laughs> He he effed up a, a perfect game and a perfect like just the whole thing because if we would have beat them 13-0, we went 13 and 0. It was just, it was a magical moment. We still won, but he effed that up for them. <laughs> most definitely effed that up. Everyone get, everyone right. everyone gets a ring except his is a little dinged up at the end. He's like, hey, the, why is everyone else has a little more shine than mine? Uh, no, Dude, his, I, his 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 ring was a pinky ring. <laughs> <laughs> pinky toe ring. I got to tell you, it's funny because I was coming out during the time and, of course, seeing Roy and all those cats straight, Thatcher, all those cats. Um, I, I did take a visit to good old uh, Norman right after that championship. I, ironically, I was at Florida State. Then I went to o, OU. And, man, I don't know if you remember, bro, but we went to Oklahoma City and I laughed my butt off because we walk up, y'all's whole crew, Oklahoma State been in line for at least 45, the Oklahoma State football player, in line for at least 45 minutes. But we get dropped off, and all I hear is the door guy say, oh, you in the house? And those poor dudes, I'm here I am, 18-year-old. I'm like, we just going to walk by. He looked, and, and I saw one of them with an Oklahoma State shirt, and, man, we went right on in. It was so funny and live. And I, we end up uh, judging a certain contest on the stage. But uh, woo, boy, I, if, if my recruiting was over that day, I would have chose something different because that was first class. It was earned. So kudos to those good times, man. It was it was pretty fun. Oh, man, I'm pretty sure you guys got the red carpet rolled out in, in Austin for y'all. But yeah, o, o State, I love O State, but they're like the little brother, you know, no disrespect. But it's just it is what it is. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, they always get the back seat when it comes to the boys in Crimson. That's for damn sure. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, they're undefeated this year. We have a loss. You guys are undefeated. This could be the game that maybe decides the Big Twelve champion when it's all said and done. This could be not only the this this could be the first of two meetings we have this year. Uh, Roy, what are some things that are really exciting you about this OU team that you think you could exploit the Texas guys with? I honestly don't know, to be honest. Um, like I was saying before we started, I said, I mean, your boys look good, man. They're they're clicking, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so talking about us first, us first, you guys. I mean, I, I just week in and week out. I don't care what the offense does. I just want to see the defense shine to the ability. I know they can shine at, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I just I would like to see more. I like to see more uh, turnovers go our. I mean, go our way. I mean, I think the K State game. I think we dropped three, three or four, mm-hmm. and it's just like, man, it's like you gotta, you gotta capitalize on those opportunities, and they're gonna have plenty of opportunities because I know Thompson's gonna be putting the ball in the air, and um, you know our boys gonna have to pick the big boy pads on with the guys as running backs, you know. So it's, um, I would love to say I'm looking forward to the game, but I'm. I'm more nervous than anything because uh, we're going to have our hands full for damn sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has this team under- yeah, I've been well, talking about so turnovers all year on this podcast. And... Go ahead. Sorry, Nick. What do you say, Nick? I said I've been talking about I've been talking about turnovers all year on this podcast. I mean, we've been lacking the turnovers as well, and I look at your guys' stat line. You guys only have three picks this year. So, I mean, it's a big part of the game. Yeah. It's huge. I mean, it's a game changer. I mean, Especially with um, our offense, like if 
I'll just go back to last week's game. I mean, K State did a good job keeping the ball away from our offense, you know, and our defense could not get off the damn field on three and outs, you know. So um, we need to get the ball back into, you know, the offense's hands so they can, you know, try to, you know, you know, push a score up or, you know, just change the field position. But um, yeah, turnovers are going to be a big deal. I mean, you know, anytime you get a turnover, you know, it, it should lead to points for, right. you know, the, for your team. So, um, so we'll see what happens. I, it's no predictions. I, I just, I just want to say good game. I want to have a good time. I cannot stand y'all fans. Cause y'all be talking mad. <laughs> if, boy, oh my gosh. So bro, I mean, hold on, hold on. Are you kidding me? When I yeah, walk through that, you fair, especially, you especially. Oh, look now it comes, <laughs> now it comes <laughs> out. Come on, man. Hey, I walk through that. I walk through that fair, and the second, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm actually, I, I wear usually a black and burnt orange. You know, some different off the off the beaten path. It doesn't matter. The second they see that dang on horn, boy. And, and again, horns down. I don't care about that. It don't bother me. But it's that middle finger I usually get from the OU fans. Boy, they are live, man. Speaking of horns down, you guys are the most softest school. <laughs> no no way. Us, we want that. Us, complaining about us throwing the horns down. You no, that is our fans. That is, we can't even do it. Unless it's a flag, come on now. That, that, that's that, why. I, I, we're gonna that's we're, why. one thing that's we why. will always agree on is that that's crazy to me because I why. I laugh. I, I sit there, I'm like, hey, I appreciate you doing my sign. I was like, hey, yeah. that's all I say. I was like, I appreciate you doing my sign, up or down. And then, man, you got cats b- building buying shirts. I was like, you do yeah. realize every time you buy a shirt with that horn on it, you are donating to Texas Athletics. So I sit there and have fun with it. And, and, and but yes, you are right. That whole flag, but that was our previous coach. He, uh, yeah. you know, that, that, that was some of that stuff. But hey, he, you said your previous coach, right? Yeah, so he was a, he was a representative <laughs> of the university. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, he, but not not one that we really cherish and love, though. That <laughs> uh, that we can all that we can all hey, agree on. Hey, he was your coach, regardless of the situation. He was a representative of the University of Texas. No, oh, and, and still maybe and the fans. <laughs> exactly. He most thousand percent he getting paid. Yeah. I, I I don't want to be a coach, but I should be a coach. And if I do horrible, I'm still gonna get paid. I'm, I'm still gonna fired. get paid. That's the only reason I've thought about ever being a coach. <laughs> exactly. Bruh, you can get fired and you get paid for like six years after that. Yeah. Exactly. It's crazy. Great you can kid. you can you could absolutely stink at your job get hated by the entire fan base, booed out, kicked off campus. Pretty much they pay for your rent to get out of there. And then you're still making millions of dollars. It's, so, it's honestly a great still making the Bobby Bonilla money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that by- I think Nick, you said to me when we were watching the game on TCU, you're like, we, we love the horns down. It's good publicity. You know, yeah, I, mean, I was walking that- around in Vegas and people who had no ties to Texas or the big 12 were giving me horns down when I was wearing my UT shirt on Saturday. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, good for you. You know what? It's a recognizable university. It's a recognizable gesture and brand. So I'll welcome that. Mm. Yep, for sure. Mm. We were talking before we got on on recording, Roy. Uh, we were you were amped up about our running backs and we were amped up about yours. Uh, but you were a little hot and cold on them. Has this team underwhelmed you this season? Underwhelmed me and like, Just look, the performance, performance capacity. Obviously, people think Rattler is going to be the Heisman favorite. People peg them as the number three team in the country. They haven't y'all haven't lost yet, but you've dropped back and back in the rankings week in and week out. Uh, I think yeah. you've, you stayed at it's number six, but teams have jumped you. So yeah, you guys I mean, underwhelmed. I, I don't know. Um, hell, I just say just keep on winning regardless. It, it doesn't matter how you win. You can win. You can win by a big lead as long as you get a W in that W column. That's all mm-hmm. that matters. Um, but at the end of the day, this day and age, it's it's a little it's different because you know you got these kids with social media. They're probably reading news clippings of themselves. They come in here five star, four star, whatever. They have all these accolades that you know they think they need to be given a silver spoon and it, it's just it's not that way you got to earn it you know what I mean mm-hmm. and so with with that being said it's sometimes you just gotta you gotta man up and play to your potential you know what I mean and not play to 
your competition's uh, you don't have to play down to your competition. And I feel that we're just, there's, there's weeks where I, I'm like, man, we look strong. And then there's weeks I'm like, uh, like we could do better, you know? Mm-hmm. And so. It, Especially it's just, in Norman. Yeah. Man, Norman you used to never be know. Such, such a, a home field advantage. And y'all beat folks down in Norman, but they, yeah, they, they looking real suspect lately at home, which is so it's weird. Nice. Cause you talk about that. Cause that's across the board. Yeah. Sure. Well, you take away tech. We've well, been looking suspect at home. I was like, y'all, y'all don't want to protect y'all's house. Like th- yeah. that doesn't mean anything to y'all anymore. And so no, it's just, it's, it's, it's a pride thing. thing. I think, yeah. I think the tradition for your university, as well as my university, it might, it might've got lost in the wash just a little bit because it's, we took pride when we stepped on the football field. We aren't, we're not just playing for the guys on this field. We're playing for the state. We're playing for, uh, our home fans, we're playing for the names on our back and our families. I mean, it was just, we were bred a little different. You yeah. Know what I mean, let's just say yes, that. Sir. And, and that's, that's, that's saying it lightly. You know what I mean? Our, the correct way. Because yeah. there's other words I, I would love to use, but I'm not. <laughs> but I just, it, it's just, it's a different breed of athlete this day and age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's something we've talked about a lot on our show, just about like motivations, what it means to be in our, in our case, you know, what it means to be a Texas Longhorn and like, why are you really playing? Are you playing for the state? And from what we've talked about, like it's changed a bit, like motivating these kids, you guys were both talking about how great it would be to be a coach. Motivating these kids is it's different. And it's a bit harder nowadays, I think, because guys aren't as willing to just run through a brick wall like they used to be able to. Yeah. But I, I'll ask you this, Roy. If you were the coach, you're the, you're the defensive coordinator for OU right now. Bijan Robinson, in the same way that Spencer Rattler is a Heisman candidate, he's right there with them. In the second half, you know Gary Patterson comes out in that TCU game, Quan's favorite, and he says we need to tackle him better. And that's that's a tall task to tackle Bijan Robinson. But what are you telling your players if you're going into that game? How do you prevent him from having a huge impact? Because He's, he's Texas's, you know, he's their X factor. So what are you doing to limit him? Um, <clears throat> first, I mean, you know, everybody, you just say that you have to gang tackle him, right? Um, and if you were to be one-on-one in a one-on-one situation, you know, do your best to try to slow him up or turn him back into your pursuit, where your pursuit's coming from. Um, <clears throat> and then, I mean, once you get him wrapped up, I mean, you got to try to strip that ball. So... I mean, it, it's it's it'll be a, uh, a two prong, three prong way to try to you know to limit him. But I mean, it's gonna do. You can't stop. You know, I would don't not take this out of context, but you have to stop their key player or greatness. I mean, it's it's tough to stop it. So um, the best way you can do is only try to contain it. Because you know, at some at some point during the game, he's going to gash us, and he's going to get a big he's going to get big run. You know what I mean? So, to try to limit that is just try to play fundamentally sound. And when you get to him, try to get him down to the ground. And while he's going down, try to you know strip the ball away. So, um, I mean, those are the only things that you can really say to a defense. You know, and. <clears throat> Uh, I don't. I would say, I mean, one man really can't really beat you, you know. So you have to do a good job in your one-on-one matchups with the receivers, and then once he gets the ball, you just got to swarm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a good answer. I got a quick question. So mine certainly forty-five, thirty-five. It was a good time. Um, probably, ironically, my my favorite wasn't a catch. It was it was a block. So. Your boy Lindy Holmes got the business. <laughs> so that's my favorite play of Texas OU. Well, what's your favorite play, man? Um, I know one I unfortunately have to see on commercials every year during this game, this lefty quarterback. But I don't know. I don't know if that's your favorite play. It's damn sure a hell of a play. We got to give props when props are due. But what's your favorite play of that game? Of uh, the, the 2001 game? Or just You're talking Superman or, or just in general, or, all of them. Yeah, just, either way, okay. everyone so, you played. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to 99, right? So it was my first year. I didn't know, not 99, 98. So 98, redshirt freshman, 
my coach, Coach John Blake, let me um, come to the game as well as a couple other retro freshmen. And Ricky Williams, t- I mean, he took off. I mean, he did like a sweep and just, just took off. And I was like, whoa. Like, first time seeing Ricky in, in person, you know what I mean, just live. That was amazing. And then we had a then we had a running back named Demond Parker, and he, I mean, it was like him and Ricky were going back and back, back to forth. You know what I mean? So that was just seeing that was just iconic. Um, and then ninety nine, um, Apple White. We were playing against we we're playing against Apple White, and um, and that's 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 another story too. So <laughs> he we came to I, I play. I gave up a. a um, post corner in the end zone because I, I took my eyes off my guy and they scored a touchdown and they came you guys came back and you guys beat us in 99 and I remember Apple White coming to the tunnel just talking mad noise I like I mean he was cussing like he was he was I was Apple White was legit like I mean yeah. I still don't know why Mac Brown did not play um Apple White in 2001 have no clue Apple White had some dog in him man it, he had major dog in him, but my thing was, to this day, I still call Mac Brown our best teammate because he kept Apple White off the field. <laughs> <laughs> but so, at that moment when Apple White was talking noise to us, you, you, said, you, you said you didn't talk smack, man. You said you didn't talk smack at the top of the show. How does how is that not? That's not talking smack. That's honest. That's the honest truth. When your coach <laughs> does not, when y'all's coach does not fit the best player on the football field, it's true. For whatever whatever reason, I appreciate that. Like, I mean, that's great. Like, so that point when Apple White ran up the tunnel and was talking noise to us, I said I will never lose to Texas again. Never. I was like, this it's not gonna happen. Cause I mean, I, I took that personally. Especially I gave up I gave up the touchdown. And then two thousand, my favorite play was probably uh Rocky Kalmas had a one handed interception because he had a cast on one hand and he ran it in for a touchdown. Um, and, and then 2001, the Superman play was, the Superman play was, was good. Um, but I, I really liked, it's not even just one play, but I liked how Andre Wolfolk came in and he locked down Roy Williams. Mm. I mean, that I would say his, uh, Andre's performance against Roy Williams, your guys' Roy Williams was amazing. Amazing. Dude, that actually that, that that takes me to another thing because you and I have talked about this offline, bro. Yeah. We're in a day of social media. We're uh-huh. we're in a day of all of this stuff. Clearly, you're Roy. I literally in my phone. I got Roy Williams, then I got Roy Williams, Texas. <laughs> so I, both of my boys. And I, how often? Because we've talked about this. How often do people, especially our crazy uh, Texas fans, please? figure out which Roy you're trying to talk to. How often do you get messages still today with from our, our Roy Williams or that's meant to go to our Roy Williams? Uh, constantly. Uh, I got, <laughs> it was, it's, it's funny, dude, I kid you not. There was a, let me see, I'm pulling up right now. There was a guy oh, that sent me here. a message. No, no, no. There was a guy, where's this messages? Uh, where's that? Dang. I think it was i thought it was twitter maybe oh maybe it was instagram so there's was three Roy williams out there though the, the coach there from is, unc a, i get confused with him as well um <laughs> there was a damn there was a guy that sent me a message and said hey do you still live in odessa and i, was, I didn't respond to him but i mean oh right here this too this too <laughs> rondo whatever it is this, look it says do you and still you live still in Texas? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, it's just, it's crazy. But um, I get mixed up with the other Roy's all the time, and I, I have fun with it now. I just got tired of trying to correct people like, "Hey, you got the wrong person." I just roll with it. Especially the coach from uh, North Carolina when he retired, I got so many Tar Heel fans saying, "Oh my gosh, thank you so much." <laughs> everything that you've done so i was just replying back with different memes and just i had a ball with it <laughs> and they they still and i they, i had a ton of north carolina people follow me and it, i don't think it clicked yet for them it, it was crazy it's crazy That's you wild. guys were teammates as well on the cowboys did you guys have any de, yeah. like delineation on who they were talking to in the organization like different names for each other no nah, i it no 
I mean, because in the NFL, it's it's pretty much offense defense. So, yeah. You know what I mean? So you you uh, you're on your respected side. Not like it was any division, but you know, offense. They meet with their offensive coaches, all that stuff. And only time we really came together were like team meetings and then practice are in the locker room. But outside mm-hmm. of that, I mean, it was pretty spread up. And then media, uh, whenever we had media, you know, Rich Del Ripple will come grab whoever they wanted or they'll come into the locker room and interview whoever they want. So it was never no mix up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you obviously, you know, Roy, known for the hard hits on the defensive side, okay. right? In the NFL – today you know this year especially the flags have been flying left and right so easily are those refs throwing the flags what do you think it's just it's gone too far because i'm even watching on saturday and i'm like some of these quarterbacks are taking massive hits and then i watch on sunday and i'm like that hit would have been for yesterday that i saw for sure would have been 15 yards rough in the passer it has it gone too far like is there a line that we need to obviously like tread on either side because we want to protect people but there's a time where like the you know the refs just get too flag happy um yes <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe space uh, you it, can it, say it man it, it's i don't know it's it's tough because what i'm watching on saturdays and sundays is not what i grew up on mm-hmm. and so when watching players like I watched the game and receivers coming up and he catches the ball and he's falling down and the the DB is literally trying to come just finish him up and that guy falling down his shoulder pad hit his helmet he got a 15 yard penalty for hitting the defensive player and it's like man what is he supposed to do you know it's the game is so um I don't want to say soft it's kind of soft um not the players just the officiating Mm -hmm. and um it has empowered the offense there's no back in the day there was an intimidation factor of man i'm not crossing that middle with steve atwater and ronnie lott and all those guys because they're gonna take me out now i'm gonna go across the middle because i know i can catch the ball take two steps and then they can then they can hit me you know it's Mm -hmm. they they don't fear that and that and that's that's not right because as it was, it's dangerous. You cross some bar, you can go in between those two white lines. You can get it. You can get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so now it's it's not that. There's no intimidation factor. And so it the game, the game has changed and it's in favor of the offense. And I don't know if they can ever retract um the rules that they have in place. I don't think they will because that messes up with the bottom line as far as dollars because they want high-flying offenses, they want big touchdowns, you know, they, they want the celebrations, they want all of that. And then if you hit, <clears throat> if those players get hit, they get hurt, you know, that messes that, that messes up the bottom line. So I don't think it would ever change, but it it has gone in favor of the offense and the defense really, ha- they don't have any, um, they're, like, for instance, when they put the rule change in for me with the horse collar and uh, yeah. targeting and all that stuff, it's like you're a mechanic or a plumber and you're saying, you know what, you can't use these certain tools to fix this problem. And it's just like, well, how am I supposed to do it? And they give you no other tools or resources to help you do that. That's how the defense is. That's how the defense is and defensive players take the field now. It's like, well, what am I supposed to do when a running back this side and I can't grab and try to grab his jersey because you're called horse collar. Our receiver catches the ball and he's jumping up in the air and I'm low, but you know he he comes he's coming down with his head and his head our helmet's hit and that's a 15 yard penalty. I mean it's like you're playing for free at that point because you're gonna you know you're gonna get a 15 yard penalty. You know you're gonna get a FedEx on Tuesday or Monday whenever the Wednesday or whenever it comes. But it's not it's not fun it's not fun to watch. And it's 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 I feel bad for the defensive players um, for college and professionally. And think about think about this. It's like especially a college athlete. It's like you get a 15, you get a personal foul, you're ejected yeah, for the rest of the say. game. And and then bro. you have to sit out. You have to sit yeah, out the first half. That's insane, like, bro. I mean, look what happened in that Oregon Stanford game, right? Like 
he goes out of the game, completely turns the tide, Stanford wins. That's an Oregon team that if they go undefeated, they're in the they're in the playoff. Yeah. Like change their entire season. Exactly. Well, and you talk about bottom line. Yeah, that's just, that's a whole lot of money. The playoff versus you know the the holiday bowl. And again, bowl games are great, but it's just a whole different uh payout with, with the different games that you don't get to very often. Yeah. yeah. And I think also another underrated aspect too is you know, a guy gets ejected, loses loses film time, right? For for, for scouts to look at. I mean, you gotta yep. get as many reps as possible when you're in college because you want to prove yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's like I look the targeting call. If we're Texas fans, there's a targeting call. Like, obviously, you don't want anyone to get hurt first and foremost. If we get the 15 yards, great. But even still, I hate seeing a kid get tossed, even if it's the opposing team. It's like, dude, yeah, like, it's, it's like compounding. I mean, it's like, bro, I mean, you're getting three, three times the penalty for, for one situation. Like, it's like, yeah. when, why is that so extreme? <laughs> Everybody yeah. who played the game, who watched the game, who coached the game, all of that. No one wants anybody to get hurt. But no. can it be one or the other? I mean, first of all, I don't want anybody to get ejected unless no. there's intent. That's what they try to throw in that whole intent. If somebody do something yeah. crazy, if, if someone get ejected, I want everybody in the stadium to be like, yeah, bro, you can't punch somebody. Like, come on, yeah. you, you got to go. Yeah. That, that's what it was when we played. But now, because you're you know what you're doing your job you just yeah. happen to not be some inhumane person who could turn his head at the, at the last minute mm -hmm. when the other player do something it's crazy yeah. it's, it is crazy and it's, it's crazy a 15 yard penalty here's the deal fine then instead of doing a 15 yard penalty do a 30 yard penalty you know what i mean but right. let that kid still stay on the foot step let him stay on the field you yeah. know don't don't inject him you know yeah. it's not it's yeah, it's not that egregious. Like, come on. Yeah, you want best yeah. on best every time. You want best on best too. The thing is, you can you can review that as well, right? If it's not called immediately, you can go back and review that. And that's the only penalty in college that like they don't review happened in TCU. It happened in the TCU game, yeah. right? Because Patterson calls a timeout, they have nine men on the field, and that play gets reviewed. I mean, it should be a call where it's it's so blatantly a penalty that's yeah. when they throw it, right? Yeah. yeah. Not when like, oh, you know what? Let's go look back and make sure. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, last well, thing, totally man, I, know, I know you got your family there and we appreciate you being on, but I, I'm going yeah, back sure. to my thoughts. And I remember the first time I heard about the, the we're actually doing something together now. You got uh -huh. Texas and know you going to the SEC. And yeah. I, re I remember my initial thoughts. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. I'm like, I'm too young for my conference to go away. Now there's other moves being made, so they're going to figure that piece of it out. But at the time, I was like, bro, I'm, I'm still in my 30s, but my, our conference is going to be gone. I, I, that's not that's weird to me. What were your yeah. thoughts when you heard about and, and really then then and now, if they're any different about the whole Texas OU SEC move? Um, I'm for it. Um, I truly I'm truly am for it because I don't feel that <clears throat> OU and Texas, I don't think they get their 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 due because I feel that you know just we look down upon because we're in the big twelve. And it's gonna help with recruiting for both schools. Um but my biggest thing for OU was are you guys really ready to get down with the pigs and wrestle? And what I mean by that is just let's just say this. I know a school well I know I know a play a player that one of our um, coaches was wanting to recruit. The head coach called him and said, "You guys are not even in the top five, all right?" Um, school A, or actually, they they're the lowest. The, the school that they said the lowest amount was was one hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars, and. So I'm thinking to myself, like, are y'all ready to get down in the mud and wrestle with them pigs and man up and do what these other schools are doing yes, to sir. compete with them? You know what I mean? We can't go the, oh, this is what we have because here's the deal. And I, I tell all recruits this whenever they talk to me, I said, hey, at the end of the day, every school offers the same exact thing. Now, one school may just got a new gym our weight room. So there's, there's is a little bit shinier. So we offer the same, we offer weight training. We offer meals, we offer full scholarship academics, 
the bottom line is you got to look to your left and right, see who the other guys that they're recruiting, and see if you can um, get along with them because you're going to be you're going to be locked in at least four to five years with them. So that's what it 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 really that's what really matters. And then our move to the SEC, I just I don't I don't know if OU is ready for the SEC tactics. I can only mm-hmm. speak for for I can only speak for OU. Um, Texas is uh, pocketbook is just a little bigger than. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! One of the reasons it's bigger because they hold on tight to it. <laughs> no, it's the same. We said the same thing. I said man, NIL is new to some schools. It's not new to a lot of schools. They've been light years ahead of that. They've been exactly. It's been in their budget for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So I just don't. I don't know if OU can compete yet at that level. So there's going to be some lean years once we get in the SEC. I mean, and that's just going to have to be expected. You know, being in the Big 12 championship or being in the Big 12, it's, you know, you know, it's it's status quo. Like, everything's cool. We know that we'll be in, probably in contention, you guys, one, two, two, one, whatever. But now we're moving out of that and we're going <laughs> to – it's we got the man up, you know. Be real I mean, way. I was one of my buddies sent the the average size of our offensive line compared to SEC's uh, defensive line. <laughs> oh my goodness! I think our average line, I think our average line was like two eighty. Their defensive line is like two forty or some or three forty. I'm like, God damn! <laughs> <laughs> oh, those, those Georgia guys are insane. Georgia is playing out of sight right now. Yeah. Ooh. I'm. I can't wait to the end of the season to see how that unfolds for sure. And, yeah, me too. Ander, Anderson on Georgia is some ball player. That linebacker yeah. can hit, dude, and he is yep. fast. And there yep. are mountains. And and y'all, look, I will say this about OU: y'all have had some sick offensive linemen the past couple of years. So to see that yeah, stat it's, line, it's um. I wish they played more. I would. I'm not. I don't know. I'll just say it. I wish I, I don't know. I don't know the dynamic, but I hope that the the veterans and the guys that left instilled um more of how to be professional and to you know they've had o, OU's had a rich history and good offensive alignment coming out of there. And right now it just doesn't look like that. You know, it doesn't look like anything was passed down to the offensive line that we have now, because I mean, they're, I mean, we're giving up a lot of sacks, you know, I mean, our running backs normally, they, once they hand off the ball, the the running backs are already in the, you know, to the, to the linebacker depth. Now it's not that it's like they get the ball there. They get hit by a defensive lineman. It's like, well, I'm not used to saying that. So our offensive line just, I mean, we need to, we need to do better. We truly do. I think that's for both of us, man. We, we're going to have to. And I guess that's ultimately to our excitement about moving to the SEC is now we can keep those folks around. And now we can start going back to getting those level folks that Griffin and all them cats ran back, you know, Ricky and all our, our guys, yeah. Jamal, Tibby. And so hopefully that's the plan. Um, man, I know you got to get to the family. Certainly I was a little uh, delayed it's trying to good. do the it's Lord's work. I got time. I got you time. Good? All right, cool. Yeah, let's rock it. Let's keep it rocking and rolling, baby. We asked a couple more for you then, Roy. Uh, just yeah. while we're talking about some old time guys, y'all have had a lot of great quarterbacks come through. Who's your favorite yeah. OU quarterback you've seen? My favorite? That you've seen. Oh. Uh, between Bradford, I, White, your guy, Josh, you know. Michael, just, yeah. You some, some dudes. I, I, I honestly, I, I love Jason White. That was my guy. I mean, I, I honestly truly feel in my heart with the way our defense was in 2001, if Jason didn't get hurt in the Nebraska game, like he got hurt on a freak injury. He literally was rolling out through the ball, pop, his knee goes out. I, I truly feel we would at least um, we would at least been a contention to be a, uh, to play in the national championship. Because Jason White, I mean, Jason Jason was out of sight, man. And I, I felt that with Jason's dynamic as far as being able to run and pass and just create plays, I felt that 
See, we would have won the games that we lost. I think we lost to O State, and I think we lost to Nebraska that year. And um, I really feel that we would have literally had a better chance of being in contention. Yeah. So Jason White, that was 100% Jason White. Um, but, I mean, let's just be real. To be able to see Kyler do his thing, and um, Kyler, Kyler was dynamic, man. I mean, he <laughs> – he might be short in stature, but that, that that young man is fast. Yeah, it's scary. I mean, I remember when he was quarterback, and when we played, I think I think obviously the Red River game. Um, we we played him, and we beat. We ended up beating y'all, but we were up by a lot at one point. He yeah. came back in that one quarter. It was ridiculous. he came back in the one quarter. <laughs> oh, it was like a sixty some yard run, and he. I was like, oh man, I remember. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah it was it was crazy. crazy. And it's he's 4-0 right moments. now in the league. Everybody doubted him he in the is. league. Dude, Dominating. Cardinals rocking, man. He's, he's flat out. But, hey, you know what? Actually, ironically, you got you got Kyler and my boy Colt over there. You know, Colt, Colt giving him a little yeah. mentorship. Yeah, yeah. So it was, <laughs> it's, 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 it's working out for him. And then Cliff. He got the whole Big 12 in, yeah. in Arizona yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Cliff, Cliff. Oh, Cliff don't want to talk about me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Cliff. Cliff said in uh, whatever the Red Raider paper was, he was like, uh, I would love for I would love to see Roy Williams leave school early. Cause ah. I was I was terrorizing Texas Tech, man, especially in two thousand one, man. Oh my goodness. He he couldn't do anything. He was frustrated <laughs> for real. Like so he said Cliff, he wanted Cliff, you to leave Cliff, early. He wanted me to leave early. <laughs> like I I want Roy Williams to do it. Hilarious, bro. That is a sad Seriously. quote. <laughs> is, I never heard of it. Quote hey, like no, that. And, and, but it was true as hell. It was true. Yeah. He wanted me out. Bro, oh, that is he, he is so lucky that that wasn't in the age of social media because if the, everyone yeah. thought that Sam Darnold seeing ghosts was bad, can you imagine another a starting sure. quarterback like asking a player he plays no. once a year to leave early? Oh my god. That is yeah, not I good. I you know what I would like to say though? Yeah, man, it would have been. I know the tradition about the Cotton Bowl, but your guys' stadium looks so freaking cool. I would love to have played in your guys' stadium. Yeah, dude, dude. you know what's funny? Yeah, yeah. I, a lot of people, and we don't talk about it a lot, but then because I got recruited in y'all stadium too, and so and the memorial, like, it looks cool. Like, it would have been cool to, for because I'm gonna tell you, in our era, we embrace that hate. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy, and especially when you're on the field to 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 go in there and play. And I see other teams do it, and, I, and I'm a little bit envious because it would have been so live. We had y'all had it with Okie State, we had it with A and M, you know. Yeah. And and to go back and forth and have that about it, that that's that's funny you bring that up because a lot of us have talked about that. Yeah. And so it would have been cool. But Cotton Bowl is great, you know. Is no, Cotton Bowl is amazing. It's amazing, but um, that that food been cool. too. The fair fit, y'all get to yeah. experience. Q, you're gonna get to experience <laughs> it for real this year's man. I am, yeah. man. I'm finally not. See, <laughs> hey, you know what's funny about this? Roy actually did the radio sideline radio for a bit for Oklahoma, and then mm-hmm. I, I did, did it, of course, yeah. for for tech yeah. for Texas. And like Roy, I'm equally happy. Nothing against our lovely universities, but I'm very happy not to be working on the game day and 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 being able to watch and chill and see Different my boys experience. and all that. But, for sure, yeah. but that's. I was so happy. I mean, I'm not going to say I was so happy, but I was, when I retired, I was done. You know what I mean? So being a silent reporter and then you have to go back over film study and research people's name. Like, I'm just like, I literally did not want to do that anymore. You know, and it, I give props to analysts and silent reporters and for everything that they do, but it just, I just left that. And I, I left it for a reason and I did not <laughs> want to get back into it. So when they, when I, when I was done, I was so happy to be done with being a silent reporter because I just got tired of having to research people's names, yeah, not saying their names right. And I mean, <laughs> it's just like, nah, I, this ain't for me. Like, <laughs> I'm right. so done. Yeah. No, I was the same way, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I got a question. That, so I always had, man, when we win or lose, regardless of that game, my, my, tradition was turkey leg man i love me some fair turkey mm-hmm. legs did you have did you have a go-to after the texas OU after the red Ooh. river robbery well here's the deal if we did not win we couldn't go to the fair oh so like so in 99 we uh we had 45 minutes to get dressed and get on the bus and go home 
but 2000, Oops, 2001, so, dude, Jesus. It, was strict, it was strictly business. Bob yeah. Did not play. So 2000, it's funny because I still got the Polaroid. So I did go to the fair in 2000. And um, yeah, man, I wrote the mechanical bull. I had turkey legs. I mean, I, I, just had, I had a, I think we had like two hours, two hours in the fair. Had a ball. It was amazing. Awesome oh, time. Wow. That, I love that little insight right there because that just shows you what a championship team is. Like yeah. you lose. All right. No, there's no like, all right. You know, we've mentioned our previous coach. I'm not going to, I'm this is just my imagination running wild. Our, the predecessor yeah. to Sarkeesian was, I would imagine, all right, you boys lose, you know what? Go have some fried rice and a pineapple. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be on the bus and back to Austin soon. But that's like, yeah. I mean, it's just like, that's a, that's a championship caliber team is like no nonsense. You lose the game back to the drawing board. You know, we're trying yeah. to accomplish one thing and one thing only. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you how, I'm going to tell you how hardcore Bob Stoops was. So in 2000, when we won the national championship, why not? But we played in the Big 12 championship game. Bob told us, um, if we don't win this game, you guys aren't getting Big 12 championship ranks. Or no, take, take that back. Let me rewind. The national championship game, he said, if we don't win the national championship, he said, we're not getting Big 12 championship ranks. Yeah, I like yeah. that, though, man. You got to yeah. earn it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Good. because because ultimately, psychologically, yeah, we did that, but that's yeah. what we—that's what our goal was. But this is the goal: finish yeah. this thing. So I, yeah. I, I right. appreciate. It. Well, I I view it differently now that I'm out. I mean, I'm still a part of the program, whatnot. But I view it differently now because now we celebrate Big Twelve championships like it's a national championship. You know what I mean? Oh, we won back to back to back to back Big Twelve championships. And we celebrate that. Which, yeah, that's a great accomplishment. Yeah. But just think about it like high school football. You're supposed to win your league. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like you're playing for a national championship. So it, 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 it hits a little different for me at times because it's, it, I'm just like, man, coach really said that we weren't going to get Big 12 championships rings if we didn't win a national championship, which he, he most definitely, dude, when we got off the plane in Miami, the first thing we did was go to the whatever college we were practicing at and we ran gases. I think we ran about 12 gases. And he said, for you guys, I think that this is for a leisure trip. No, this is business. We're here to we're here to play a game. We're here to win it. Boom. Set the tone. Set the tone. Hold on. What, what was Bob, was that his first or second season? That was his second season. I'm about to say, good Lord. Hey, he was like, <laughs> um, hey, fellas. I know y'all thought last year was cool and all, but it, it, it got real, real fast. But he brought Oh, yeah. Season. Yeah. That reminds me of a story that Victor Cruz told us on our show when they were about to play the Patriots in the Super Bowl the second time. And Eli was just like, look, I know you guys are going to want to have a good time. I think it was in Miami, too. You guys are going to want to have as much fun as possible. But if you win this game, it's going to be the best celebration of your life. So you need a lockdown. And Victor Cruz is like, it just hit home for everybody. We were just all business the whole week, like even on interviews and everything. And like Eli Manning, like the fun, goofy guy we look at, like, all right, like the like the meme on Twitter, like every time he speaks <laughs> is yeah. like just saying that though, like it shows you, okay, that's like a, that's a championship. That's a hall of famer right there. Um, sure. Roy, we always ask all our guests this. Um, it's an important question. Your favorite memory as a Sooner playing Watching anything, your favorite. On the, I would say that's on the on the field, off the field, classroom, you name it. No, nope. anything. Um, as a student athlete, for, as they say, it's, it's it's the same for the NFL too. Um, the memories that I made with my my teammates in the locker room will forever be cherished. You know, because even with I mean, fans, whoever, supporters, whatever they, whatever you want to call them. It's the the grind and preparation that you go through with your brothers in the locker room and the laughters, the cries, the blood and sweat and tears that goes into it. Those those memories will always be cherished most because when no one is there cheering you on, rooting you on, to talk bad about you or whatever, it's just it's just us. You know what I mean? It's just that that nucleus of the team. And the memories that were made, the laughs that we had, they will always be cherished. I mean, it's the times in the locker room, thousand percent. Yeah, that's 
That's a get. That seems to be the common theme. John, we had John DR yeah. last week. He from TCU, and his was the same exact thing. It was like my favorite yeah. memory as a TCU player was when all the Louisiana guys got together and sang a rap song that no one else knew except the Louisiana dudes. But they were all they were all like jumping in the middle at the end of it, just going back and forth. Uh, Roy, total blast, man! Thanks for hopping on. Um, Not a problem. Uh, I, oh, man, I, always good to see you, fam. Glad I wish you everybody's luck. healthy. Uh, yeah, you said you're going. Uh, you're going Friday, Thursday, Friday. We're going down Thursday. I'm actually Thursday or Thursday night. There is a dinner with uh, the OU alumni, our donors, and Texas donors. So I'm going to that Thursday night, and then Friday I have to do a t- a news station deal um, for one of my endorsements, and then after that I'm me and my wife are free. We're chilling. So I mean, we'll probably go out to eat somewhere and. Just chill. All right, man. Game time. Game time on Saturday. Oh, and then I'm going to the Cowboys game on Sunday with Ken Hamlin. You know so. what? I think I'm going to the Cowboys game on su- Sunday as well. And yeah. I'm I'm sitting in Texas O'Roy seats, <laughs> Roy, Roy Williams seats. But um, oh, I'll, I'll, start, I'll let you know. Huh? I said he has seats. He has tickets. Bro, that, man, if I'm saying this right, that cat in his last contract negotiated, like, it wasn't a lifetime. But somehow, either he negotiated or paid for season tickets, and he has like ten of them. He he's had them for a awesome. long and uh, listen, not just ten. They're either on the row one, two, or three, <laughs> oh, wow. forty yard line. They're they're That's insane awesome. seats. That's, That's nice. I've been telling him. I was like, bro, I, I need to get those tickets. I said, I'm not that big a Cowboys fan, but I need to see it say them from there. And so yeah. I, I told him. I, I reached out to him, and he said, let him know. So. Yeah, if I let, if I go to that game, I need to, I need to let, I need to let him know. Yeah, let him now, know. Roy, yeah, so Roy, now you're gonna get people hitting you up. Honestly, you're gonna get people hitting you up asking for tickets. For tickets. Now. <laughs> yeah, well, well, this, is, <laughs> this is this is the clip we're about to cut and put you on blast, man. The whole fifty hey, minutes. Yeah. Hey, Roy, let me get those cowboy tickets. <laughs> let me get some tickets. Let me get some tickets. Let me get some tickets, my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, appreciate <laughs> you, fam, man. I'll, I'll no, hit no you problem. up. 